Hey guys, welcome to a new sewing video. So winter is coming very, very soon and I am in need of some tops, sweaters preferably, but I don't really want to buy sweaters and I'm not that good and especially fast at knitting. So I thought I would get myself some cheat knitted fabric. So I got this stuff, which is a lovely, fluffy, warm, cable knit printed fabric that I think would be absolutely perfect to make a nice winter top with. So something I have really wanted for a while now is a nice sweater with really big puffy sleeves. And then I saw the 1890s cycling sweaters, which are pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. Just a little bit more toned down, I guess. They are very extra and I like mine a little bit more casual and wearable, but honestly that design is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. I think it looks super comfortable, super warm, visually interesting enough to not just be a simple sweater. And one of the most important things, I need something that is form-fitting around the waist so that I can wear a skirt over it. I would love to do something inspired by that, but I don't really know how to do it. But then, I started searching online and I found Fresh Frippery's blog and she actually has a whole tutorial on there on how to make exactly this using a very similar type of fabric and hers looks amazing and it looked like it was very quick and simple to make so that is what I want to do today. I'm gonna use her tutorial, Fresh Frippery's tutorial on her blog as a starting point for this. I'm gonna tone it down a little, <laughs> make it a little bit more 2021, see if I can make myself a nice cycling sweater inspired top. First thing I need to do is make myself a pattern. I'm not sure how to go about this and if I should do a mock-up or not, because this fabric is stretchy and I don't have any mock-up fabric that would be stretchy as well. So I might just have to guess, maybe use the measurements that um, Fresh Frippery has on the website and just see where that takes me and hope for the best. I have quite a bit of this fabric, so. I'm not too worried, but yeah. I think I'm gonna start with just a body uh, shape and then we'll move on to the gigantic leg of mutton sleeves later. I just tried tracing a sweater I already own and then I decided to cross check my measurements with those on the Fresh Frippery blog and I'm very glad I did because that shirt must be very stretchy because <laughs> my sweater turned out way too tiny but um, actually the sweater that is on the website should be more or less exactly my measurements so that is great. I'm just gonna follow those and now I should have something that fits so I cut out one and now I'm cutting out the second, I'm doing a single layer, or actually I'm cutting on the fold, um, so that I have two equal sides, the front and the back, that should give me a functioning bodice. I'm gonna try it on for size after I have assembled it, uh, to see if I need to take in the waist. And I didn't forget my seam allowance, which is something I always tend to do when I track my own patterns, so yay! I just quickly basted the two halves together and tried it on for size and it's surprisingly okay. Um, I do think I misjudged where my hips begin because they are way lower so I need to take out a little bit of room here but other than that it is honestly fine. I'll just mark this with a pencil and then take out a little bit of room there. No, before I do that I actually um, need to finish this better because this is now just basic and I think this fabric requires an overlocking stitch. She suggests doing, um, you're just surging the seams. I don't have a serger, but I do have an overlocking seam on my machine. So I think I'm just gonna use that and it's gonna increase the longevity of this garment because I want it to last because so far I'm really loving it. All 
already. It's a new day. My top is more or less finished. I have done the overlocking stitch along all the seams just to be sure that this doesn't unravel because the fabric is kind of weird. It has this almost like stuffing <laughs> um, in between where the cable knit print is to make it more 3D, but that does tend to come out of the seams. So I just overlocked or used an overlocking stitch on all of the seams, including um, my raw seams at the neck and arms. I also overlocked the bottom and then stitched that up. So it's a single fold along the bottom and I can start working on the sleeves. So I'm once again using Fresh Fripperie's guide um, to track my pieces. I already have my lower arm bits. They are small. I'm not sure I'm gonna fit in these. She did warn um, that her arms are fairly thin and you might need to uh, make this a little bit wider, but I forgot. <laughs> And I'm now about to make the upper sleeve. So hers and the original, like on the proper cycling sweaters, are gigantic. I need this sweater to be practical and wearable, which means it needs to fit inside a coat. Because I, I can't use a sweater that doesn't fit inside a coat. It will be completely impractical and unusable to me. Uh, and I do actually intend on wearing this a lot, in fact. So I need it to have the look of a large sleeve, but not be so big that I can't wear anything over it. So I want it to be moderately poof. Puffy and gathered sleeves are my favorite to make as they are so easy to set. They always fit. <laughs> Sleeve time. I made one of the lower sleeves and it fits but it's uncomfortably tight. So I am gonna go ahead and make it again, but a couple inches bigger this time. But I do have my upper sleeve bits as well. So once I have slightly larger lower arm bits, I can start assembling the sleeves. I made them a whole 10 inches smaller than on the Fresh Frippery blog, but somehow I'm still not convinced that this is going to make the difference between will fit into a coat and will not fit into a coat. <laughs> they were still large. Anyways, I have my um, drumstick sleeves, so now it's time to set them into the top, pleat them up, and then move on to the next step. Oh my gosh, this is utterly ridiculous. I love it. We have droopy shoulders. <sighs> this is one thing I didn't consider, um, but yeah, I am gonna have to set the sleeves again. <laughs> so much work. They are gonna be really cute, however, once they are in the right place, because this is just... I love it. I love it, but they really they can't be this low. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take a couple centimeters off the top and then we'll be good. <laughs> Alrighty, as the sun went down yesterday, I just finished a couple of quick things. First of all, I narrowed the shoulders a little bit and I'm just gonna admit to what I did here. Remember how I folded them over to demonstrate where the shoulder should be? I did indeed just stitch it down, <laughs> fold it over. That resulted in these kind of like mini shoulder pads almost on the inside that do actually help to give it a little bit more volume and also the pleats just stand up a little bit nicer so it helps give a little bit more volume 
um, that otherwise isn't really there because this fabric, even though it looks very thick and luscious, it is quite thin and definitely not a knit. I mean, you can see by the way it drapes that it's not a knit. And this helps to just perk it up a little bit and give it more of that like thicker quality, visually in any case. So that's actually fantastic and it saved me a lot of time. <laughs> so the next thing I did was um, to cuff the bottom of the sleeve. And to do that, since this is a one-sided fabric, the inside doesn't look knitted. Um, so let me demonstrate on this narrow sleeve that I have here. So basically I just folded um, the edge in once to get rid of the raw edge. And then I just pushed the sleeve down into it. That way you get a nice cuffed look with um, just one-sided fabric. So you just have to make sure that that edge is tucked in. And you get a cuff like this. And I just stitched it along the bottom here so that I am sure that my raw edge is hidden away. And I also stitched it along the top here just loosely. So that is how that works. Um, I just hope the sleeve isn't too short now. I haven't tried it on yet, but there was a lot of length in there. So I think it should be fine. And the next thing I need to do is the collar. So Fresh Ripery has a fairly high turtleneck. I think I might actually prefer a little bit of a smaller, almost mock neck for this one because it is already quite a lot and my neck isn't very long. So I think I'm just going to customize that to fit my neck. And another thing that I think would help if I made a smaller turtleneck is that I might be able to get away with um, not doing the actual side closure. So the original cycling sweater, like the iconic cycling sweater that is at the Met Museum has buttons along the collar and the shoulders and it obviously closes and opens there. So Fresh Frippery has done closure on the collar only and not on the shoulders and I would preferably like to do no closures anywhere and just pull this over my head. So I'm gonna see if that works, if I can make a tube that is stretchy enough that I can pull it over my head. For now <laughs> oh guys this is everything i wanted i absolutely adore it it is absolutely ridiculous and amazing and fabulous at the same time exactly what i was going for perfect history bounding piece it is very clearly historically inspired but it's also modern enough that i think i might be able to get away with wearing this in daily life i think my choice of fabric really takes it to a more modern place. And I've also decided not to add buttons because I feel like there is already enough going on in this sweater. Maybe buttons would just make it too much. I love it so much. It is so extra. <laughs> yeah, fabulous, fantastic. Also, um, yes, you may mock me for talking at length about how I wanted to make a shorter turtleneck and then doing exactly what I said I wasn't going to do and making one that is entirely too long. So for now, um, I have decided to just fold it over so that it is fully double into the length that I actually was going for, but that does expose my seam in the back here. So I might, if I can be bothered, uh, take out the collar and put it back inside out so that I can flip it over and um, use the other side. Because I do actually like this look of the flipped over collar. The seam is in a little bit of a weird place. It's kind of towards the back here because I decided to 
um, prioritize matching the pattern along the center front and center back over placing the seam exactly at the shoulder. I think that pattern matching here um, looks really good with this pattern, sells the knitted look a little bit better. That is why the seam is in a little bit of a weird spot, but now my cable knits are all lined up, <laughs> which is great. Another thing, um, I wish this hat was a little bit more volume in this bit. I am considering adding something to the shoulder maybe to help this stand up a little bit more because it does fall flat and I want it to be big and poofy. Maybe I need a little bit of a more structured fabric underneath um, to help me make that a little bit bigger. If any of you have any suggestions for that, I'm still very new to picking out materials and stuff. So if anyone has an idea of how I could do that, um, in a way that is still practical and wearable and comfortable and like doesn't take away from the whole sweater idea. And that would be wonderful, thank you. <laughs> the sleeve length is perfect. I'm very glad about that because I was worried. I did take away a lot of the length in this cuff, but it worked out just fine. My elbows are still covered, uh, which does make the sweater nice and warm. I also love how form-fitting it is around here. It works perfectly tucked into a skirt, which is exactly what I wanted from it. But it also looks nice. Uh, when I take it out of the skirt, let me just do that so you can see the whole picture. It is fitted around the waist and then flares out to uh, accommodate the hips. And I think it looks great like this as well. Although I'll personally probably be wearing it tucked in. Yeah, that is it guys. I am actually really surprised by how easy this was, how well it went, especially considering I drafted this more or less guessing <laughs> and hoping that it would turn out right. I want to give a huge thank you to Fresh Fabry. I will definitely put a link to that blog post in the description box below if you want to make your own and just check it out. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Another little history bounding experiment. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more sewing, but also beauty, fashion and lifestyle content. If you would like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there are links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!